yeah, hours calls. on that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We could, yeah, we could talk for hours on that. Yeah, right. We gotta get back on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is I mean, on at, for hours. <laughs> radiation, which apparently is worse than the sixty cycle. Have you read that book? No, the, the, the um, dirty, the dirty lectures epidemiological, there. Whatever. Epidemiological research associating people living, live or work in places with strong electric fields have more health problems. And a fellow wrote this book, doctor, epidemiologist, health statistician, several states. Work investigated like um, aluminum foundry workers up in the northwest. They work in high electric field, all that stuff smelled with electricity. And other people like that. And he's his feeling is it's not the 60 cycle pulse, it's the hazardous, it's the high frequency ones that backfeed on the lines, particularly from things like compact fluorescent lights. Okay? Particularly bad <laughs> um, culprit in that regard. And other kinds of electronics of all types. Um, Okay, so how are LEDs? Do I have to go to LEDs faster I'd say than I thought? LEDs, you know? I think, faster than we thought, yeah. <laughs> because they don't require the electronic like starters. Yeah. Uh, An LED, I guess, I mean, a diode is a one way circuit. See, you didn't even know you were going to get electronics, did you? So, a diode is a one way circuit, so I guess they I would not create resonant so frequencies, would they? <laughs> not like you've had some electrical I'm engineering just experience. I'm so impressed by yeah. all this right. high electrical engineering information, and what I want to know is. How do you get the plugs out of the trays? You know, it's like the simple mechanical. Yeah, well, we're gonna go to that. Yes, that's that's coming up. Yes. Okay, so. I'm not doing all this. Uh -huh. So we got this. Okay. All right. Then the other thing is lights. Now, actually, I wonder if we do need to do that, or if we should just talk about it and see if people want to have it shown. Basically, if you don't have an outdoor greenhouse, right? Even if you have a germination chamber and a heat table. You can't grow your plants because they can't be in the dark, right? So the solution to that is simply shop lights, right? For us, once again, so they probably have the bad thing. I'm sorry about that, you know? You can get very expensive LED grow lights, but that's outside of our budget, you know? Um, anyways, shop lights, they used to be seven bucks a piece. They're about 18 bucks now. You know, you can put them on a timer. You want to run them about 18 hours a day. Two sets of shop lights with the reflector right next to each other with a cool and a warm bulb in each one will work as if you have grow lights in it. It's one with, with a cool white? And a, and a warm white. Cool and now they're not calling them warm, they're calling them other things like sunny. So you want like a, a, a 2500 Kelvin and a, and a 4500? Well, I went, I had a 6.5, I went for a 6.5. Okay, went with a, you so 6500 and a... I figured the higher, the more likely to have the full spectrum. Okay. You know? but, but that's because I, pardon? Go ahead. That's because I didn't say cool and warm. If I said cool and warm, I wouldn't even look at that, you know? Okay. I said cool, but then warm isn't there anymore, you know? We had that, you know, it was the best, I actually got her name, Rachel. Best person I've ever had at Lowe's. She was so cheerful and worked so hard to help me figure it out. I was like, thank you. Nice. <laughs> and she basically ran from one place to the other, you know? And she was on the phone doing other work. It's like, you know, I, I wish I could have found a place to suggest to. What a curious mind at work. I love yeah. that. You yeah, know, it was really wonderful. Something. It was wonderful. Um, anyways. You set that up, right? And I used to set it up so that the chains could be lowered up and down. Those lights are swinging then, and fluorescent bulbs break. So what I prefer is to make the light stationary and then have something that's waterproof that I can put underneath it to get the lights up, the plants up to where I want them, which is just a few inches under the lights. I mean, as little as an inch is fine. The closer the better, because the lights are not very strong. They're not the sun, you know? And then as the plants grow bigger, I pull out one layer of whatever I've got that's going up. I found a bunch of styrofoam that was being thrown away. It was about this thick, you know? And so I just piled that up underneath it, you know? And as the plants grow, I pull out one layer at a time and the plants drop down one. You can, I have ever lowered the lights up and down. I've had some pretty swinging lights some days. You know, it gets a little hairy. So I prefer to have the plants go down rather than the lights come follow. You know, go up from them. That's about it. I mean, we can set it up. I bought the stuff to set it up, but I don't know, we might want to spend more time on doing plants. Do people want to see it set up? Oh, Not no. necessarily. It ain't rocket science. No. No, I do it myself without my without Greg's help or Rocco's help, you know? Yeah. Basically those lights come with cords. So you they come with cords. Them, you know? There's nothing much to it. Anybody can do it, you know? Right. Yeah. You know? Um, just one thing. My friend um, Hank, when he set me up, he actually put an extra ground on it. 
And the reason is, get a ground, put it in the ground fault. That'll solve it. Yeah, all this stuff, electricity plus water, everything should be plugged into a ground fault circuit. I've gotten some pretty good little ju jazzy jo uh, jolts at Highland Lake. You know, mm -hmm. we had we had tables and tables. The water would drop down. You know, and, and it was all carefully and gasketed. And probably stuff one there, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, this is yeah. one. You know, you probably all recognize them, right? They have a little test button on. And mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, um, just be careful that way. You know, I mean, you can get a. I mean, I just got a buzz. You know, I touch the plants. It's like ooh, you know, and it's like <laughs> time to clean buttons. this up. You know, um, it's actually if you if you do it and you're careful. Um, and make it so water doesn't drip down on the lights, it actually works that the lights can be a warming thing. Your top layer, if you have a little tower of them, your top layer can be your heat table. Because even fluorescence will make some heat. And you get up here, and all of a sudden, you know, down here, if you're doing it in a basement, it's in the 50s. That's where the brassicas are, and then up here is in the 70s. You know? <coughs> um, but you do want to be careful you're not getting the lights that are in there getting wet. You know, you got to be careful with that. You know? Right. Boiling, steaming water and lights would not be good. Probably. No. No, no, I'm using this. I'm pretending this is a, is, is not a germination chamber. Oh, it's just a tower full of lights. Okay. You know? Yeah, no, no. I do not recommend that you have your lights in a germination chamber. That's a bad plan. Yes? So for a small grower, if I was just using these trays with the lids on them, mm -hmm. how do I do that with in regard to the light? You would just get some shop lights and either hang them or attach them someplace and put the plants under them. You need oh, okay. two sets. Two sets of lights so will do you four flats. Okay, so I couldn't just put them in a room like Not this. enough light. Um, oh, I mean, in your atrium you might be able yeah, to. Yeah, that's what I was... You need enough light. If the plants start to stretch, you don't have enough light. Okay, you know? or it's, it's too a... far away. The ceiling, where yeah. the light comes in, is too far away. Yeah, I mean, you could try putting mylar, or your family probably wouldn't like that, though. But you could mylar your um, entire atrium, and then they'll be in, it would increase the light, you know? Mm. There we go. Boy, I'm going to be in trouble. Don't tell your family I gave you that <laughs> idea, you know? On the other hand, they can get some color lights and go in there and have discotheque things. And <laughs> it's, almost, yeah, it's just a little room. <laughs> it's just a little room, right, you know? That'll work perfectly. That's not cool, yeah, cool, by the way. Lights. Those cool discotheque balls are made up of warm old balls. CDs. Cool oh, balls. they're so pretty, aren't they? They're just beautiful. I save them. I used to hang them in my fig tree to try to get Yeah, I know. Hardware, right? Unless you want to do the do the greenhouse hoop too, we still gonna do one. Oh yeah, we gotta do the greenhouse hoop. Let's look at the compost of the greenhouse hoop, and then we'll come back and do the rest of the seed stuff, okay? Well, we can Doesn't have to. We just bend hoops. Okay. We'll That's just bend all. Hoops. Yeah, just bend hoops. Okay. okay. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, no. Okay. Red, red marble. Red spot. Says. No, oh, no, I think that's, that's in that. that tray. This. Oh, this might be deer tongue. Deer tongue. Ooh. This is kale. Tongue. This is hybrid this is kale. kale. Here, this side. Green. That doesn't look like kale. Does it it doesn't look like mm -mm. kale. Mm -mm. No. There's something else written on this side. Winter density. Trout back. Okay, trout back. Trout back and winter density. Place. Oh, oh. <laughs> All of them with the gift of gab and you're just lost. <laughs> well, actually, that's just... Orange. Oh, I know. Orange peels are kindling. You didn't know that? Orange peels are kindling? <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. They do. They do. If you dry them, they dry them. If you dry them, they're oil contained. Yeah. They're uh, <laughs> volatility. Well, this is cool. You don't have to buy the little Johnny's bender. Well, Johnny's bender? Yeah. Like a regular conduit bender? Sort of. No, it's, it's made out of conduit. It's about, I think it's about that long. Hot. I mean, I have a conduit bender. This is a Johnny's bender. Yeah. 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 Stakes, these stakes then are driving the ground over on your post. So the stakes make the form. That's the huh? It works pretty well. You do have to, there's a little bit of tweaking it at the very end because it's spring back, you know? All right. Oh, okay, uh, you should I look for a cheater bar? Maybe I'll go find a, che a cheater pipe. So we might have enough of one of these. Okay. All right. Okay, so here, let's, um, 62 inches is. I got tape. He's got tape measure. Oh, you got a tape? Mm -hmm. So here, well, I'll just measure and you can pound them in. Alright. If you want to put a...
called for more than I bought, but Greg, Greg's right that we don't need quite as many as they say. You know. Just start. We'll get them in more in yeah, a minute. Yeah, right. Lay it out first and then drive them in afterwards. We need one for the end. Yeah. So we need to save one. Okay. Actually, I've never been on exactly by this pattern, so I'd be curious to see how it comes out. It works pretty good. It does not have that top. Well, that's how you do that well, final push we'll and you end up with right it. Let's yeah. stop right there, because then the, our last one will be a little bit arched. Yeah. I mean, okay. he did. He had it. He just said you got to go a little further on the last one. Right. You know? That's all. Okay. You definitely want that gothic effect, you know? Is, this en is that enough bars? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's enough. Drive them in. We have another one there if we need it, though. We only need one more to hold the um, rebar. There's no water pipe or anything down here, is there? No, there's no water <laughs> pipe right here. There is that um, three-phase electrical line, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are these pre-cut ones from Lowe's or something? Yep, yep. You know, I could have bought the other one and saved it, but I'd have to find a... Um, I would have to tie it on top of my car and get it not to bounce around. You know how that stuff bounces, you know? <laughs> I had to get a hacksaw and it was getting cold and it was dark and I was like, I'm just buying these guys. We usually, we usually buy longer the ones. Is, uh, it's a nice, rich, fertile ground. Hopefully yeah. it's stiff enough to do this. Yeah, I hope it is too. Yeah. We actually did one of these on an old building site in Winston-Salem. We had to, for the post, for the doors, we had to cut through paper. So let's put another one. We still, with a group of people at CFSA, right okay, had the, the whole thing built in an hour and a half. Oh my goodness, that's fantastic. Covered and the doors framed in. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And, it's and you can actually oh, see it happening oh. if you go to the CFSA website. They have it on the CFSA website. In the snow. In the snow, right. They're interviewing me afterwards there's snow building up on my head, <laughs> on my hat, you know. Okay, so so what's the measurement of the, what is the, what's the size of it? Are you following, you're not following the Yeah, he is. He is. Here's the size right there. 62 inches. And so, and it, okay. it, this is what you end up with. You know, you got a seven foot tall by at the peak by 12 foot wide. Okay. You know, it tells well, you I've everything. Done this. Somebody has like to bend this stuff, see how it feels. Can't envision. So yeah. I'm trying to Direct pick up this finished product. Just keep it flat on the ground. Yeah, that's critical. So it doesn't get a three dimensional twist, and it helps have somebody that. here holding right. it down like this. Right. And if you have a hard time bending it, you just get a pipe that goes over the end and give yourself some leverage. So anybody can do it. Stay Perfect. on the ground. You gotta stay on the ground. Go a little further. Well, that's probably good. Okay. All See, right. You know that? That's probably a pretty good profile for okay. a greenhouse. All right. Because it would give you a, a little bit of spring. It would give you a um, arch top so the snow runs off, right? So now, if you were doing a bunch, could you then set another um, piece of rebar to where you want to bring it so it's all the same always? To where, you know, where yeah, he went so past the thing? You could. Idea. See, or, I need that to be consistent. Okay, but to really be consistent, what you do is leave that original for a pattern and just make another one. And then okay. check them. So set that. You could make a jig on a piece of plywood. People do that, yes. Yeah, and yeah. then just store it in the... There's various ways but, you can do this. But this is like for people like me that couldn't cut a, a, a piece of plywood in a curve if I tried. You know? <laughs> And now you come Very compare them. Nice. Look at that. Oh, look this at that guy. consistency. This guy is good. Yes, You're is. hired. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> you are hired for our backyard. So then, just for a tricky, <laughs> since we're not doing the whole thing, um, there's various ways you can put these together at the top. We started off by using a short piece of a smaller conduit that went inside, bent like this, ah. and then just set a screw through it to hold it. Had another piece of um, conduit for the purlin and, sure. and a conduit along the peak. A U joint that held them together. And a U joint in my greenhouse that U bolt, plastic tore every one of those, even though I had it covered up with some uh, inner tubes or something. Rubber. So, what we did over there, what I've been doing lately, is taking a 2x4 and kind of determining this angle, sure. drilling holes in the 2x4 both sides and just. Shoving them in a two by four, like that. Okay. If anybody needs to see that, we can kind of at the end of the thing. We